All right. And then without further ado, I'd love to introduce our esteemed speakers. Associate Professor Gina Kruger is the Deputy Head of Programs Nursing and Midwifery at Victoria University in Melbourne, Australia. She has a breadth of experience and practice informing her experience and expertise in leading education to support the preparation of safe and reflective midwifery graduates. Her clinical research encompasses investigating ways to better support midwives to fulfill their scope of practice and the provision of woman-centered care to promote healthy childbearing experiences. Gina's key memberships include sitting on the Midwifery Advisory Group of the Council of Deans of Nursing and Midwifery of Australia and New Zealand, the Trans-Tasman Maternity Education Committee, and being a foundation member of the Victorian Midwifery Academics, creating change in the student educational space. Gina aspires to creating knowledge for a shared vision between midwives and women to improve midwifery care for all through advocacy, collaborative research, and education and preparing the graduates of tomorrow. And then Professor Linda Sweet is a midwife with broad experience in clinical environments, education, management, and research. She is the inaugural chair in midwifery with the Deakin University and Western Health Partnership. Linda is a life member of the Australian College of Midwives, a fellow of the Australian and New Zealand Association of Health Professional Educators, and a Flinders University Distinguished Scholar. Linda has over 140 peer-reviewed publications, is the deputy editor of the international journal Women and Birth, and is a peer reviewer for numerous other international journals. Linda is passionate about the midwifery profession and improving midwifery care. And with that, I will hand over the slides. Fantastic. Thank you, Caitlin. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. Look, thank you, Caitlin, for the introduction, and thanks, everyone, for attending today. It's wonderful to see people from all over the world, Namibia and Italy and Spain and US as well as Australia, so that's fantastic. Um, we're, Gina and I are delighted to be here as one of the first speakers for Vidim this year, um, and we hope you find our presentation interesting and valuable for your time. So as Caitlin introduced, my name's Linda and I'm presenting today from Melbourne, Australia. And my colleague Gina is also located in Melbourne and she'll present, I'm presenting the first half of the presentation and Gina will take over and present the findings and discussion. So our presentation today is based on a body of work that we've been doing around peer support for midwives. Before I get into the presentation though, can someone transition the slides? I can't seem to move to the next slide. Um, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians um, of all the unceded land, skies and waterways in which Victoria University and Deakin University students and teachers work together. We pay our deep respects to the ancestors and elders of the Boonwurrung, Wadawurrung and the Wurundjeri country, as well as the traditional custodians of all the lands on which you may be learning and teaching today, where education has taken place for many thousands of years. Thank you. Next slide. So midwives, as we all know, like we're all midwives, so you know, we're uh, talking to the um, already indoctrinated. However, midwives are essential to provide quality maternity care for women and babies in all the health systems in which we work. Maternity services in Australia, but also across other nations, are experiencing critical midwifery workforce shortages and retention in the workforce is a significant factor. New graduates are leaving soon after registration or choosing to work part-time, placing stress on the existing workforce. In our day-to-day -day duties, midwives are exposed to a range of challenging situations, such as clinical situations, workload pressures, and skill mix, just to name a few. Support for midwives influences levels of our resilience and building coping mechanisms. By being able to access support and develop self-awareness to grow our own sense of professional identity as a midwife in practice is an important component to, to better improve the maternity workforce and to keep staff, um, uh, educated midwives in the profession. So ensuring adequate support in the workplace is recommended as one strategy to retain midwives. Being supported in the workplace we know is integral to midwifery practice. However, support can come in many forms. It might be mentoring, preceptorship or clinical supervision, 
are some of the ways in which support may be provided. However, Gina and I particularly came interested in looking at the informal peer-to-peer -peer support, which has become the focus of this body of work. Peer support occurs when people pr provide knowledge, experience, emotional, social, or practical help to each other. So, you know, there's six concepts that, that desire exploration. So it's not only emotional help that might be provided, but it could be practical or um, experience knowledge as well. So informal peer-to-peer -peer support is the type of collegial support provided on an ad hoc basis. It's when needed. Next slide, please. So in order to better understand peer support in midwifery practice, we first undertook a scoping review of the literature to understand what's the current state of knowledge. We haven't yet published that, it's half, halfway written, so it will come out, hopefully be published in the near future. We identified a range of factors that influence peer support, such as the contexts of practice, practice boundaries and scope of practice, intra-professional relationships, so relationships between midwives, and support from managers and peers. We decided then to further explore the concept of peer support at a major tertiary hospital in Melbourne, Australia. The hospital provides care for uh, maternity care for over 6,500 mothers each year. The community it serves is extremely diverse multicultural community. More than 50% of the women have been born outside of Australia, and they're generally low socioeconomic status uh, families. So they're quite a diverse uh, group of women that we service. The hospital offers standard what, what we call fragmented care. So you can go to an antenatal clinic and you see a doctor or a midwife or whatever. And when you go into labour, you get whoever's on the shift at the time. Um, but we also do offer about 20% of the women get a midwifery group practice, which is a caseload model where you get to have a known midwife or team of midwives. The aim of the study was to explore the midwife's perceptions and experiences of peer support in the hospital setting. And the research questions, as you can see, are shown on the slide. We selected a qualitative exploratory design to answer the research questions and, and uh, address the aim. So following gaining ethics approval, we purposefully recruited midwives from any context of practice across the health service. So that's antenatal, uh, maternity assessment centre, birthing, postnatal, group practice, any, anywhere. There were, you know, we were happy to take midwives from any context of practice. Mm -hmm. We were mindful of not wanting just one context of practice, such as birth suite or postnatal ward. Um, we wanted to look at across the gamut of um, midwifery roles. So all midwives um, in the health service were sent a participant information sheet explaining the study uh, to their work email to enable informed consent. At the time of the study, there were just over 400 midwives employed at the health service. So the e email included the date and time of the planned focus group discussions so that midwives could identify a time that suited them best to know when and how to participate if they chose to. Next slide, please. So the research was undertaken by two PhD prepared midwives, Gina and myself, neither of whom had undertaken clinical midwifery practice at the hospital, but whom were both known academics, probably to the majority of participants. Uh, I myself, as the clinical chair of midwifery, work on site uh, doing research, and Gina is the senior academic midwife at the neighbouring university that brings, um, uh, brings students to the, host the health service. We conducted four focus group discussions over a one-month period, and each of those lasted about 60 minutes. In total, 23 midwives participated from a range of contexts of practice. And I do just want to point out that this happened in sort of the midst of the COVID pandemic. So we had to delay data collection a few times because of the restrictions of gathering people together um, in the hospital service. All discussions were audio recorded and transcribed verbatim by a professional secretariat. And then these transcripts were then checked for accuracy against the audio recording and uploaded into NVivo software for analysis. 
We then undertook a content thematic analysis, uh, sorry, thematic content analysis across the all four transcripts um, with attention to the similarities and differences between the group's discussions. As you understand, when you do a focus group, if, if the group starts going down one avenue about uh, experience, sometimes you, you miss other things where a different group might take a different focus. Uh, so we were particularly interested in looking across all four about similarities and differences. Um, both researchers undertook independent coding of the data and then we merged our ideas and we discussed themes until a consensus was reached. So I can see there's one question asking about who were younger than 18 years and why did we exclude them? Um, in Australia, uh, to be a registered midwife, you have to do a, a minimum of a three-year degree uh, or a postgraduate study. So all midwives would be at least 21, 22 before they register anyway. So um, it's more just... Uh, an ethical issue to state that we're not recruiting people under 18 years of age. So I'll now hand over to my colleague Gina to present the findings and a discussion of, of the concepts around peer support. Thank you, Linda, and thank you everyone for being here this morning. So in our study, there were four emergent themes that came through that I'm going to talk about. So we can see it was about having a sense of belonging, communicating effectively, initiating and ex accessing individualised peer support and transforming support-seeking behaviours. Sorry, I'm just... Now I'm going back. My apologies. Having a sense of belonging. So this is really concerned about how midwives work together and build rapport and trust to be able to communicate effectively with each other. So this is about intraprofessional and interprofessional relationships in the workplace. So when midwives spoke about feeling, um, having that sense of belonging that grew, they felt emotionally supported in their practice by their peers, which then influenced their capacity to be able to provide care to women. Belonging increased as midwives experienced being part of the team. So this was about team building, how well the midwives felt supported in that team as individuals. And it helped with relieving some of these issues around work-related stress. We see so much talk today about the work-related stress burnout in midwives. So this whole peer support grew from this sense of belonging as midwives in the team. So this work-related stress really came through in the focus groups when the midwives spoke about women's complexity in care, complex morbidity issues, perinatal bereavement, adverse events. Um, so the context of practice meant that there were mixed experiences of peer support. And the next slide just takes a moment to show us some of this raw data that the midwives spoke about in the focus groups. I'll just give you a moment to have a look at that. So this had the impact of feeling supported and feeling unsupported. There was, in the final quote there, it talks about getting that sort of validation to feel confident in doing your job. So it comes down very much to the individual midwife and how they feel in the work. Um, context of being trusted, building that rapport, being part of the team. The next emergent theme was communicating effectively. So this was related to midwives feeling whether they were being heard to initiate and provide care for women. So it really was very strong about the quality of intra-professional relationships and the flow of interactions and support that was received. So the context of a woman's care in the workplace impacted positively or negatively on the peer support that was accessed or provided between midwives. So this related more to the nuts and bolts or structure of the workplace, in this case, in the hospital setting. So thinking about the skill mix of the team, talking about the level of experience, whether there were more experienced midwives on a shift, mentoring, supporting, peer support, the less experienced midwives. There was a lot of um, very interesting information shared by graduate or um, less experienced midwives as they were becoming established in their practice and what peer support 
looked like for them. So factors related to work-related stress, levels of fatigue, time was one of those things that was really big in, you know, whether there was enough time to um, talk or interact with people on with midwives on the shift with colleagues to be supported, to feel supported in their work. And there also came through this stream of knowledge or thought about constructive feedback and debriefing was an overarching characteristic of communicating effectively. So if we go to the next slide, we can see some snippets of data here that help us um, think about how this communicating effectively occurs with midwives. So it seemed to have a dual purpose communicating effectively. Not only was it about the importance of debriefing, the peer support the midwives were having in these intra-professional relationships, but there was also this purpose of being learning experiences. The peer support actually informed reflective practice and learning experiences for the midwives. And this helped, this is very closely linked, interlinked with effectively communicating because here it's about midwives feeling they can speak up, ask questions, be heard. So this is what this theme is about. The next theme was about initiating and accessing individualised peer support. So this is really focused on the ways in which midwives access peer support for themselves. So it came through very loudly, very clear, that midwives felt that they needed greater peer support to meet their individual needs. And that this was really driven on an individual basis and very much self-initiated. And access was sought in or outside the workplace setting and if internal, you know, there were trusted midwives um, that the other midwives went to to seek this support, but externally there were things like family, friends and professional bodies. So, for example, the Australian College of Midwives has some um, online peer support that people can access, midwives can access. But there was a need for more freely accessible support easy to access, time efficient, which I'll talk a little bit more in about, and debriefing that really shone through as part of this theme. So here are some things, some ways in which midwives in our focus groups spoke about accessing, initiating and accessing peer support. And this, this data really talks to us, speaks to us about the need to process information. So this is really important, processing what happens in a care situation with a woman, what happens in the intraprofessional and interprofessional relationships, processing these emotions, feelings, work-related stress. So this is where it feeds into sustainability, people feeling healthy in their role as midwives and fulfilling their scope of practice. And what was important, and what's important, just I'll talk about in implications in a moment, but what's important here, many of the participants were going outside their workplace to get the support they needed. And the final theme is about transfer, transforming support-seeking behaviours. So this is more about finding ways that peer support can be an in integral part of midwifery practice in the hospital setting. So the participants, when we looked at the data, they were talking more about this informal peer support and emphasis on the use of buddy systems, about creating a safe place to talk and reflect on the work day of what happens in practice. And with the advent of so much technology in the world today, you know, there were ideas tossed around about is there a chance to do something online with a small group of midwives, six midwives in a group to access peer support, to, to verbally, orally reflect, talk about, seek support, to feel strong and able to practice within the scope of practice. There's also clinically focused peer support rather than mentoring. So we found there's a distinction here between formal and informal mentoring and then peer support. So here participants were talking about clinically focused peer support to help better manage 
this everyday work-related stress that midwives in this setting were experiencing. Importantly, peer support was really focused by the participants on the, their individual needs. So there's no one size that fits all in this situation. So finally, here's another, a couple more snippets of data that gives some insights into how midwives are working out ways in which peer support could be better, how the participants spoke about it. So debriefing, I'll give you a moment to read the, the quotes. So debriefing was a really important construct that the midwife spoke about, something to do, something tangible to help that the hospital could support them with. And also time, this is where time in the second quote, time really comes into it. And having access to peer support, um, support measures outside the domain of the direct woman um, care environment work care environment that was really important too so what do these findings speak about for practice so effective peer support is needed by midwives so being supported influence perspectives of practice and how midwives view the way they care for women so when we're talking about perspectives of practice here we're talking about midwives thinking about can I fulfill my scope of practice as a midwife as a primary carer with women? Does the workplace system facilitate that? Do I get peer support so that I feel confident, competent, um, less stressed to be able to provide that care work with women? Um, that our intra-professional relationship need to be really meaningful when it comes to effective communication and quality communication so that peer support is more meaningful, real, tangible for midwives to them in their practice. The context of the hospital setting directly influences the work-related stress midwives experience and increases that need for peer support. So we know there's a body of evidence that talks so much about fragmented models of maternity care, midwife-led models of care, and the great benefits the challenges in across all of those models, but especially in the hospital setting, to provide that woman-centred care. There's all these other parts of hospital practice that have an impact on the levels of work-related stress. Equally, to, in the provision of woman-centred care and the in, increasingly complex healthcare problems that women may be experiencing in pregnancy, labour and birth and the postnatal period, this influences the type of care that can be provided, the supports that are available to midwives and the levels of work-related stress experience. As Linda said, this data, a few, we had a few false starts because of COVID and collecting data, but you know, it, it was a part in the data that the focus group midwives spoke about. COVID and structure of care and how that impacted on how they were able to practice. So that's just one example leading from that. Leadership and effective team building are really important when it comes to thinking about a sense of belonging so that people are acknowledged, accepted, able to ask questions, feel that their voice is heard and it needs to be tailored to the individual's requirements and integrated into human resource systems in the workplace. So peer support really needs to be embedded. It's very, it's very informal, we know, but there needs to be more formal ways of midwives accessing peer support that meets our needs. And finally, it's a dynamic concept it can influence the midwives roles in the provision of women's maternity care but also somebody's personal health and well-being and this impacts on this whole sustainability of midwives presently and into the future so whether someone is so overwhelmed by work related stress seeking support doesn't seek support keeps going to work experiences compassion fatigue burnout, 
we know these are all significant issues in midwifery practice today. So I'd like to open up the floor now. Oh, sorry, I've got one more slide. I jumped ahead of myself. So where to now, we might say. So next steps. So this is the where Linda and I are at. We're sitting down, looking further at the data, looking at our scoping and review findings, and we're thinking, well, what's going to happen? Where do we take this next? I mean, we know that it talks about the development of informal and formal peer support system. We're thinking, well, how does that work in a hospital setting? And I suppose the thing to say here, preface here, is that every hospital setting is going to have a different way of working. So we're focused on this hospital setting where the research um, was conducted, but that doesn't mean that there's um, concepts in what we talk about, design, trial, pilot, whatever that may be, that that doesn't spread out and can be used by all midwives. So we need to think of piloting systems to meet the need to support practice. And this is where we're at, where discussions about with midwifery managers and educators in the hospital, because it has to be um, a, a, co, a collaboration to be able to achieve something that's very supportive, that meets the needs of midwives in this area. And of course, evaluation is a really important part of that piloting pro, um, process. 